On today's episode of You Went to Garage, I want to discuss which of these factory pedal options I think sucks for the square body LS swap. Let's do this. Today's video will be a short one, but I think it'll be really important for those of you who are just starting your square body LS swap and you're starting to gather your parts. First, let me explain this jig that I have set up here, and then I'll tell you a little bit about each of these pedals, and then ultimately I'll tell you which pedal I think you should avoid when doing your square body LS swap. So first, the jig that I've got set up here. You can see that I've got a factory pedal here on the very end. This pedal actually came out of this truck here when I first started my LS swap. This factory pedal over here, I took out of a junkyard blazer uh, while I was actually on the hunt for these two other pedals. The reason I've got all of these up on the jig right here and I've got the two factory pedals on the end is I'm planning on making some modification to pretty much all of these pedals and I want to lay a level across the top of these pedals so that as I'm cutting these down and making adjustments, I can make them perfect because I want my pedal to feel exactly like the factory pedal. So I need the placement to be perfect. So a little bit about each one of these pedals. The first pedal we're going to talk about here, this is from a 94 uh, 6.5 liter diesel Chevy truck. This is referred to commonly just as the diesel pedal uh, when people are doing an LS swap in the square body. These two pedals right here are actually the same pedal. Uh, this is a fully adjustable pedal out of an early uh, 2000s Yukon Denali. And then this right here is the non-adjustable pedal from an early 2000s uh, Yukon. So let me get into a little bit about the details of all of these. The first is I want to point out the throw. Look at the throw on this pedal. It's super long. But it actually matches the throw on this other non-adjustable pedal here. So you can see these are both very, very long throws. This one, the adjustable pedals, they have really short throws. The reason I'm calling that out first is I, I've heard and read online uh, that if you're using the tack module for one of these really short throw pedals on a really long throw pedal, it can cause problems. The pedal can be overly sensitive and it just doesn't work quite right. And I do believe that to be true because I have been running this diesel pedal for quite a while now and I can tell you that it, it seems way too sensitive. I've had my tuner try to make adjustments to it. It is just very, very, very sensitive. And I think that might be because I'm using the tack module from a short throw pedal with a long throw pedal. Now, the next thing I want to point out about all of these pedals is the feedback. This pedal right here just has really lousy feedback. There is nothing to it. I can move it with my pinky if I want. Super easy to move. These other ones, have really good feedback. They're nice and stiff. Um, what I've ended up doing with the diesel pedal so that it was even streetable was I welded two hoops down here lower on the arm. Then I added a bracket that came up off the top of the pedal and I installed really heavy springs that went down to the pedal. That gave it better throttle response or, or feedback, I should say, from the pedal, but it just never felt like a factory pedal. I took the Teha Steelworks pedal and I installed that in my truck. And let me tell you the thaw response and the feedback so much better. It's definitely the best option here. Now, what I don't care for with the Teha Steelworks pedal is that you can see it doesn't line up perfectly with the other pedals. The position isn't quite right. It's very close. It's a great option for guys who can't weld or who don't want to mess with it you can send your fully adjustable pedal to them and they'll get it pretty dang close. But where I want it perfect, it's up here on the jig because I am going to cut it and modify it and make it perfect. So uh, I can tell you, I put this in my truck. It feels great. This is my recommendation. Modify a factory pedal. Do not use the diesel pedal. It may seem quick and easy because it is a direct bolt in. It looks like the easiest option, but then you may end up adding springs like I did or fighting issues with the tack 
or something else. It's just gonna be quicker and easier just to go straight for modifying a pedal or I've heard uh, using a third gen Camaro pedal with a different bracket that a few different companies make, that's also a good option. But if you're trying to do it budget friendly, I would say modify a factory pedal before going to a 6.5 diesel pedal. Well, that pretty much sums it up. In a later episode, I'll walk through step-by-step step how I modify each one of these pedals, but that's not for today's video. What I really wanted to get across today is if you're looking for a quick and easy LS swap pedal, maybe don't look at the diesel pedal. In my opinion, it's probably not the best option. I know a lot of guys use them, but I found it to be a headache for me, so stay clear of that. Definitely just go through the steps of modifying your pedal to begin with. If you found this information useful or helpful at all, please like and subscribe. It definitely helps us out. I'm Joe, and this is You Into Garage.